Racist Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot has announced only reporters of color for interviews ahead of two year anniversary, sparking debate over media diversity and access. Debate with who? She's racist. She is barring white reporters from doing interviews. She is helping to set back race relations in this country decades. And I'll say the left in this country is doing everything in their power to set race relations back like 100 years. And I'm not just saying that. There's actually a story I have from the AP about a high school student who was arrested for posting racist comments about another student. And he was arrested based on a law from 1917. Okay, you know, the racism is a bad thing. I don't care if it's a high school student being racist about a black student or a mayor barring white people. We're supposed to be the great American melting pot, but it's coming from the left. Now, to be fair, this was a racist high school student, but now they're setting back freedom of speech. And I I thought about it when I saw that story. When I saw this story about Lori Lightfoot and this kid who got arrested, there was a time when white politicians wouldn't take interviews from black individuals, wouldn't even allow them in the same rooms or to use the same facilities. And that is a horrifying relic of the past because, well, civil rights won out. We got rid of segregation. Things kind of got better. And maybe that's it. The pendulum swings. There was a brief moment, a golden age, where we actually had laws to abide by that prohibited discrimination. And boy, were they good times. Now, seems like anti-discrimination laws don't matter at all because it really comes down to social enforcement. Why in 1917, when it was illegal to do to say these things or whatever, I don't know in what to what capacity the law was operating, because certainly they were much more racist towards black people back then. When at that time, when you had a First Amendment right to speak and they would still pass these laws in 1986, when you couldn't get a concealed carry permit and we had a Second Amendment, it does seem like we've been improving a lot of these things. But I suppose the golden age can only last so long. And now we're falling back into Puritanism and moral authoritarianism. It's about societal enforcement. That's cancel culture. One of the reasons we're so opposed to cancel culture, at least the classically liberal types, is that we believe in individuals' right to associate and have different ideas and to challenge those ideas. But once you start getting back into the moral authoritarianism, the society itself becomes... Well, it it, it throws those rights away while still purporting to have them. They must fall in line with the larger portion of society. And then social enforcement dictates. Take a look at the Chauvin trial, for instance. Chauvin's going to prison not for committing a crime, but because rioters said so. And that's it. You think speed bump Republicans are going to change that? No, there is no penalty from the far left from violating the law and being racist and, 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 and denying people due process. There is nothing, no penalty whatsoever. So the Republicans can say, don't do that. And they'll say, what are you going to do about it? Then the left says, don't do that. And they say, what are you going to do about it? They say, they'll burn your house down. And they go, good point. Whatever you want, sir. And that's where we are today. The Tribune reports, Mayor Lori Lightfoot on Wednesday defended her decision to grant interviews on her two-year anniversary in office only to journalists of color, saying it was intended as an effort to confront the issues of what she described as mostly white and male City Hall press corps. Could it be that most of the country is white? Not male, it's mostly female. But could it just be that there's a lot of people working that are white and male and women do other jobs? Apparently, they don't realize that. The move revealed Tuesday by her office was greeted skeptically by some in the Chicago media and beyond with questions about whether excluding white reporters is a discriminatory act from a mayor who has had an often contentious relationship with reporters of all backgrounds. Lightfoot emailed a two page letter to Chicago journalists on Wednesday saying her choice was a continuation of her campaign's promise to break up the status quo. No, it's to be an unrepentant racist. Lightfoot, uh, quote, I have been struck since my first day on the campaign trail back in 2018 by the overwhelming whiteness and maleness of Chicago media outlets, editorial boards, the political press corps, and yes, the city hall press corps specifically, Lightfoot wrote. She wrote that there are no women of color assigned to the city hall beat saying, I find this unacceptable, and I hope you do too. I don't. If they don't choose to do it, they can do whatever they want. If someone's racist against them or sexist against them, then I do oppose that. But that's a question we don't have the answer to. 
WBEZ disputed the mayor's observation in a Wednesday story, noting that two of its three city hall reporters are women, one Hispanic and the other South Asian. You see, Lori Lightfoot is just a racist. Interviews to Mark Lightfoot's two years in office were set for this week and come as she faces mounting problems over crime, policing, turnover in her office and ongoing battles with Chicago's teachers union. The Tribune declined to participate in an interview with Lightfoot to object to the restrictions. Well, good for them. Charles Whitaker, dean at the Metal School of Journalism at Northwestern University, said journalists of color trying to break into the political press corps have faced barriers for decades. But while he applauded Lightfoot's motivation, he said the one-time interview restrictions felt more like a stunt and don't address the root of an age-old problem. Quote, I don't necessarily know that, that it is the best way. We would, we would never, it ever in a million years, allow that of a white politician. And so it's dangerous now to say that we're going to allow that of a black politician simply to make a point about the historic inequities in media. Inequities. I love how they use that equity. Everyone's like, it's a financial term as, as if we're talking about money. Yes, we're talking about power. Now, this woman's a racist, and I can already hear the left chiming in, the woke left screaming, she can't be racist. She's a black woman. Anyone can be racist. Anyone. Now, they want to change the definition and say that black people can't be racist because it's prejudice plus power. Shut up. I don't care what you think. You're duplicitous and your definitions mean nothing to me. When I say racist, I mean something. And if you don't care for that word, then go speak a different language to someone else. What I'm talking about is a person who discriminates against other people, either positively or negatively, on the basis of race. Someone who holds prejudicial views on the basis of race, like this woman does. Call it whatever you want. I call it racism. If the woke left wants to change the definition of the word, by all means, they can call it whatever they want. It's not going to change my use of the word, and they can argue it all they want. And that's what they've been trying to do to allow them to be racist and violate the law, the 1964 Civil Rights Act. But it's not racism because we said so. They're smart. I mean, not all of them, a lot of ignorant people. But they learned that you don't need to change the law if you can change language. Take a look at the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary for a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What does well-regulated mean? Well, over time, regulated has turned into the government controls it. But that makes no sense in the context of the Constitution, which was constraints on the government. They know. Over time, change the definition of a word and you change the law. How can they repeal the 1964 Civil Rights Act? They need to change definitions. You cannot discriminate on the basis of race or gender. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gender means something totally different now. That's right. They change the definition. Then once enough people just believe it, the laws will mean something totally different. Now, you all need to stop playing this game. You think you can go to these Democrats and just be like, that's not what racism is. They don't care. They watch CNN, they get their opinions from Brian Stelter, and they don't do any research. They are not discerning individuals. We got two problems when it comes to understanding what's happening in this country. The one is most people who just sit there with drool coming out of their mouths, and they just believe whatever the TV tells them, even and without doing any research, without reading anything. The other problem with people who go the complete opposite direction and read too much random garbage and then believe crazy things like the earth is flat. There's a balance. You need to be discerning. You need to understand intention. Well, stop trying to argue with racists who are lying to you to gain power. They don't actually believe what they say for the most part. They believe there is no truth but power. They say these things. They say rest in power. That is their game. And you keep playing. And I'm sitting here being like, bro, dude just took a 500 out of the bank. We're playing Monopoly. He takes 500. And you're like, well, you know, hold on. Let's see how it plays out. I'm not playing the game, dude. Stop playing. Just get up and walk away. Go vote for somebody else. They say the board of the National Association of Black Journalists agreed with the call for newsrooms to diversify their city hall press corps ranks, but said it cannot support the mayor's method of achieving that. NABJ's history of advocacy does not support excluding any bona fide journalists from one on one interviews with newsmakers, even if it is for one day and in support of activism. Side note, I actually got an honorable mention. I was nominated as a finalist for the National Association of Black Journalists Award. Isn't that crazy? I'm not black. Now, I did a documentary on Ferguson. They liked it. I didn't win, but I was a finalist. So that was like a great honor, and I appreciate it. Tiffany Walden, editor-in-chief of the digital media outlet The Tribe, 
which covers Chicago's black communities, defended Lightfoot's action, saying it was a small step towards leveling the playing field after what she described as a longstanding lack of access for black and Latino journalists. A lot of people are outraged by this. But just imagine what it's like for black and brown journalists in the city to not ever have this access. This is literally a daily struggle for black and brown journalists in Chicago. And I wish that was the conversation instead of people who have access to the to the mayor every single day complaining about one day that they don't have access. Racism begets racism. You do not stop discrimination by just discriminating. You make more of it. Now, there is fighting fire with fire. That's true. It's called the controlled burn. When there's a wildfire in like a, in a field, the farmer will burn a certain area so that the fire can't spread. So, OK, it exists. But in this instance, you're just making more fire. And that's the thing. A controlled burn needs to be controlled, meaning you need to know what you're doing. These people are just discriminating for the sake of discriminating and then saying, yeah, see how you like it. This is where we'll end up. Take a look at this story. The AP says the arrest of a Connecticut high school student accused of posting racist comments about a black classmate on social media is being supported by civil rights advocates. But free speech groups are calling it an unusual move by police that raises First Amendment issues. Civil rights advocates supporting someone being arrested for words? Nah, you can't call them civil rights advocates. Sorry. They say a 16-year-old student in a classroom at Fairfield Ward High a high school, allegedly took a photo of a black classmate and posted it on Snapchat on May 7th with a caption that included a racial slur and racist comments. The teen who made the post is white, according to the black student's mother. Police in Fairfield, Connecticut, arrested the student on a state hate crime charge of ridicule on account of creed, religion, color, denomination, nationality, or race. The, this, the misdemeanor dating back to 1917 has been called an unconstitutional infringement on free speech rights by the American Civil Liberties Union of Connecticut and some law school professors. Hey, back the blue, baby. Good job, cops. Going arresting a high school student. But I'm just doing my job, as I'm told. You're a path- you're, you're pathetic, spineless garbage. The police who actually arrested the student are losers. Sorry, I don't care. It's not about being a cop. It's about being a loser, about being a pathetic, feckless loser. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the lack of principles. These cops are the kind of people who would kick their own mother in in the, in the gut if it would give them an extra buck. You're a spineless piece of garbage. How about you take responsibility for your actions for once and don't arrest a kid for saying stupid things on the Internet? Now, this kid, I think, is saying stupid things on the Internet and is gross scumbag. Don't post racist trash. You're a loser, too. But you're allowed to do this. That's the Constitution. That's the First Amendment. These cops are worse than scum. Police did not identify the student who was arrested because of the juvenile uh, offender laws. They go on to mention, uh, yes, they say, well, it is common for students to be disciplined by school officials for such comments. Police and civil rights advocates said it was unusual for students to be arrested for what they say on social media, if it, social media, if it does not involve threats, incitement or a pattern of harassment. Having racist ideas or sharing racist ideas is something we actually protect, said Emerson Sykes, a senior staff attorney with the ACLU's national chapter. So for all you wokies out there who for some reason are watching this, the ACLU supports racism and defends unrepentant racists. Hey, go get mad at them. Even if that viewpoint is offensive, even if it's deplorable, we don't want the government making the call about what's OK to say and think that think uh, say and think and what is not. But we have limitations on that right. Sure. But yeah, but we do have limitations. Speak up, stand up for the rights or shut up ACLU. Sykes, however, said he believed school officials officials would be justified in disciplining the student because the Snapchat post interfered with the black students right to access education. Oh, here's the ACLU coming out on the wrong side. Fairfield school officials citing student privacy rights declined to comment on whether the student was disciplined and but said the student is being held accountable. <clears throat> Sorry. A student posting something dumb on Snapchat is like a TOS violation, not an arrestable offense. This is where we're going. Judith Metter, whose son Jamar was the target of the Snapchat post, said school officials told her the other student was expelled from the school. The Greater Bridgeport NAACP had called for criminal charges for the Snapchat post. It is also calling for an arrest in another incident the following day in which Jamar Metter's brother was called racist slurs in a phone call said the Reverend D. Stanley Lord, president of the NAACP chapter. Police officials said 
They could not confirm details of the second incident, but are investigating a complaint involving juveniles and a possible racial slur said during a phone call. It was shocking, Lord said of the posting. We have to send a strong message that behavior like this won't be tolerated in any school system. Authoritarian scumbags. Do not get the government involved. This is where we're going. Stop defending the police because this is what's it's going to keep happening. When Lori Lightfoot says no white reporters allowed because she's a lunatic racist, who do you think's going to enforce that? The police. When a student says horrifying and disgusting racist things and is a piece of garbage, mind you, who do you but he's allowed to say it? Who's going to be the person that comes and arrests him like they're doing now? The police stop defending them. They are doing this. These cops should be named and shamed. They are they are spineless losers. Look at this. Jamar Metter told WABC TV that he and his family are still shocked by the posting and he had never experienced racism in school before. He said he stayed home from the school one day because he didn't feel comfortable. I just had no words when I saw it. I was so confused. Judith Medar told the AP on Wednesday she believes the other boy should be in jail for the racist posting. She said she and her family now are concerned for their safety and are looking at changing schools for Jamar and his brother for the next school year. I'm worried. I'm still concerned because we're living in a crazy world where people do all kinds of crazy things you don't know. And since he got expelled. So that's what I'm thinking in the back of my mind about retaliation. The racist posting comes as the U.S. Supreme Court is weighing whether public schools can discipline students for saying for saying uh, for things they say off campus on social media. The case involves a Pennsylvania high school freshman swear filled rant on Snapchat posted while she was at a convenience store over being kept on the junior varsity cheerleading cheerleading squad for another year. She was suspended from the team for a year. The court previously in a landmark ruling in the Vietnam era declared that students don't shed their right to free speech when they come to school. It also held that school ret- schools retained the authority to restrict speech that would disrupt the school environment. Connecticut's hate crime law on ridiculing has been filed at least 40 times since 2012 and has resulted in about 10 convictions, according to state court records. Critics say it appears to be one of only a few such state laws in the country. A bill that would have would have repealed the law died last year when the state legislature ended its session early because of the COVID pandemic. The bill was prompted by the arrest of two University of Connecticut students in 2019 on the ridicule charge of uttering a racial slur several times while walking in the parking lot of a dorm. The students entered a probation program that is expected to result in the charges being erased. David McGuire, executive editor of the ACLU of Connecticut, said he had not heard of any other cases in the state in which a public school student was arrested for a social media post. He said the hate crime law on ridiculing remains an unconstitutional restriction on free speech. Well, thank you, individual at the ACLU, for having the correct opinion in the end. Though we still heard from that one ACLU person saying, well, he did disrupt his experience. It's things like this that make me more of a free speech absolutist, because I've long said, you know, creating a creating a clear and imminent threat should not be allowed. The reason for it is that assault could include threatening someone, and that's illegal, and so that shouldn't be protected. Now, I'm, I'm moving back on that. I'm moving. I'm becoming more of a constitutional absolutist for a lot of reasons. If we can say, well, inciting violence is illegal, therefore you can't speak these things, we can just say, well, inciting hatred is illegal, therefore you can't say these things. In which case, it should be the actions that are, that are illegal. Going and, and attacking someone, okay, that's the crime. Saying things, no, we should allow people the right to speech. They should be allowed to say things that are very horrifying. And, and to, to a great degree, people actually are. You're allowed to say, I think so-and-so should be, you know, X or whatever. And that's actually not illegal. Twitter won't take you down for that. If you said something like, I want someone to go and do X, well, then you're going to get in trouble. But I'm, I think the, the, the crime is the action, not the, the speech. And I think people should be allowed to have stupid opinions because I don't want the government coming and shutting down my opinions because they think they're stupid at some point. And a lot of my opinions are stupid. So then I'd be shut down, wouldn't I? Well, I don't want to get shut down. So I got to make sure other people are allowed to have stupid opinions, too. It's just that how it works, right? Interestingly, that one opinion is actually the smart opinion in most of these things. And so, you know, you get it. When I say I have stupid opinions, what I really mean is that there's a lot of people who disagree with me. But here we go. We are entering a brave new world, my friends. Social enforcement is here. The police will be the ones carrying it out. You better pray that we abolish the police before it's too late. Because I'm warning you right now, the police will gleefully 
arrest you, bigot, because you mispro you, you misgendered someone. You think I'm kidding? They just arrested a high school kid for social media posts. I don't care what you think about cops. There's a lot of good cops, but it's going to be police. They'll find the cops to do it. Get rid of them while you still can. You can defend yourself. One day they're going to be like, you're going to be at a restaurant and someone's going to tell you their pronouns. You're going to say, I don't do that. And they're going to say, you're offending me. You're, you're bigoted. I'm going to call the police to hate crime. And the cops are going to walk in and say, look, man, we don't want Black Lives Matter throwing bricks. So we're going to arrest you and I'll punch you in the face if you resist. And then we're going to lock you up for your stupidity. It's coming. They've already arrested people in their own homes for defending themselves. You think it won't happen more? It'll happen. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.